A very good morning to you. Welcome to Jam 316 Financial Clinic. For those joining us on TV, Karibu Sana on radio. We've been at it since 6. Thank you for tuning in today. Hmm. 2019 is almost coming to an end. 2020 is just knocking. When you think about your finances, do you have a plan for the coming year? This morning, we want to talk about wealth and how to build wealth. If you are like me, sometimes you sit down and dream and think, if I had like 30 million, what would I do with it? And you have all these weird dreams that come. But then, what are you doing to get there? What are you doing to increase what you have? When we think about the parable of the talents, the master expected them to come back with a return. Many times we are waiting to hit the jackpot, but it's not every person who hits the jackpot. So from where you are, how can you begin to build wealth and to grow what you have? By the way, what is wealth? Is it just money? Those are some of the questions we want to answer this morning on the Financial Clinic. I'll be introducing our guest to you in the next short while. Your questions are welcome. 20316 is SMS. WhatsApp is 0786-316-316. Nasiyo Maswali Pekeake. If you have thoughts, if you have an experience you want to share, please feel free to do so on those two numbers. Right. Welcome. It's Jam 316 Financial Clinic every Wednesday. We talk about money, your money, and how to grow it, challenges we are facing, lessons we need to learn. All that biashara, we talk about it on Wednesdays. And uh, today we want to talk about hmm, wealth. How do you build wealth? How do you grow your wealth? Bible says, we love quoting this one, believers, yeah? It is God who gives me the power to create wealth. Hmm. Power to create. So he doesn't give me wealth. He gives me the power to create. We'll get into that shortly. In studio with me today... Margaret Wanjiru, financial consultant, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, Pasi. Thank you for coming through for me today. I appreciate it. Asante. What is wealth? Tuanzie <laughs> hapo. Because if we have to create it, we need to know what we are creating. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, there are many definitions of wealth, mm -hmm. but we want to go to what wealth is and what wealth is not. Okay. And um, in financial terms, we say that uh, wealth is a noun that actually defines your status when all your assets minus all your liabilities, we say your net worth. That is okay. what wealth is. Uh -huh. So we look at what you have accumulated and in terms of income mm -hmm. and all that. Then we less all your expenditures and all less your liabilities mm -hmm. and all that. Then we say you are you have this is your net worth. So if you earn a hundred bob and you spend a hundred and twenty, then you have minus well, Min minus 20. Minus 20. Mm -hmm. So you are not wealthy. Mm -hmm. You are on a different um, zone. Okay. So what we say is the, pover the, the opposite of wealth is poverty. Mm -hmm. And wealth brings you freedom, financial freedom, yeah. while lack of it gives you lack of liberty. Mm -hmm. Because when, you ha when, you're, when you're poor, you're really a slave. Your options are very limited. Very limited. Yes. yes. Would you say wealth is only money? Well, wealth is not really money mm -hmm. because we, we look at um, other four aspects because we can say that you are socially wealthy, uh -huh. like you are, you have a great network, so you, you, you can be socially wealthy. Yes. You can be, you can be wealthy in terms of health. Uh -huh. You are minus a disease. Yeah. And so that is another perspective. Okay. So it doesn't really have to be money-wise. It is a spectrum of many, many mm. things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But today we want to focus on that money aspect. Yes. Uh, because I know we are just about to get into January and the prayer requests will start coming for school fees, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So looking at uh, the money aspect of wealth, Bible mm -hmm. talks to us and tells us that God gives us the power to create wealth. Can anybody be wealthy financially? Yes. If you purpose, uh -huh. you have to you have to dream to be wealthy because you can oh. mm -hmm. you you cannot you cannot be what you do not want to be. Mm. So you've got to visualize. You've got to 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 have somebody you emulate, mm -hmm. and so this person you emulate is a wealthy man, and therefore you want to walk in the strides that he has walked in the past yeah. for you to get there. So if you cannot visualize it, you do not take it as part of your goals, mm -hmm. then you're not work, working towards that. Okay. So every individual who wants to be wealthy must create a plan. 
Mm -hmm. must desire to be a wealthy person and must work at it because when God says he gives you the power to create yes. it is an enablement in you uh -huh. so you must activate it you must cultivate it yeah. you must grow it okay yes so for those Christians who believe and misquote and say money is the root of all evil mm -hmm. you know for them they, 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 they have a problem with with money you know especially if you have seem to have a lot of it they have a problem with you they don't believe you are actually very spiritual so people like those cannot be wealthy financially you know scripture actually quotes the love of money yes. so they always leave that perspective yeah that when you love it you worship it yes so then it becomes an idol mm -hmm. and that is why it says then it's a root cause of evil mm. but you know we we have we have men that were wealthy that were godly mm -hmm. and and pastor james i i i, I did a bible search and uh -huh. the word wealth is really there in the bible yes if if god did not intend us to be wealthy then he that that scripture would not have been there and actually when you read psalms 1 1 2 and verse 3 it talks about this godly man and the bible says that wealth and riches will be in his house Wow. So that is really important that yeah. we actually, so when we are godly, mm -hmm. then the Bible also says that wealth and riches will be in our homesteads. Yes. So it is God's purposes for us to be wealthy. It is. It, it is, is his purpose for us to be wealthy because he gives us that enablement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then okay. So does it matter where I start? Because that's the other thing we think about that, uh, you know what? I didn't inherit anything from my father. Mm -hmm. I don't really have one of those big jobs. Me in Mkulima Kawaida, as mm -hmm. some of us would like to say. Yes. Is it possible to begin there? Is there any, ever anything like from rags to riches? Oh, yes, there is. And actually, most of the people who have um, made it, mm -hmm. they have made it from rags to riches. Oh. A lot of, a lot of them okay. will tell you, you know, when we see um, wealthy men, and I also want to define, per se, the difference between riches and wealth. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we define rich people. You know, there's a lot of bling bling nowadays yeah. and all this, all this show. Yeah. Um, but what you say is that the difference between um, the wealth and the rich is knowledge. Oh. Yes. Uh -huh. So wealthy people acquire knowledge to turn their simple investments or their simple savings into wealth. Mm -hmm. But rich people lack knowledge so they they possess money you can have a big uh, a fat account but you're really not investing it you're not doing much you're not cre you're not generating wealth it's mostly for sure it's mostly for sure yes so we do not want people to desire to be rich and that is what we need to preach to our younger generation mm -hmm. we desire people to be wealthy because when you're wealthy then even when you are incapacitated when you're not in a position to actually do what you do your money will still be generating income for you that's and that is true. what sustains you and that's what we really need to do and and i think i think what you're saying is true because when i generally think about people i would consider wealthy they are very simple very simple you wouldn't in fact if they if you are told what they own mm -hmm. you say no yes i'll never forget one time i'd gone to visit a friend of mine he's a branch manager in one of the banks in town mm -hmm. and so i'd gone to visit him and suddenly there was pandemonium in the office people were running here and there you know and uh the the somebody came to his office and talked to him and then he told me hey pastor you'll just have to wait for me a bit i have mm -hmm. to attend to this customer mm -hmm. yeah so this old man walks in i mean you look at him he looks like i old man you can't buy another pair of shoes mm -hmm. and he looks so simple mm -hmm. so simple and they sat in there for about 45 minutes i waited because i was in need of something mm -hmm. And when he left, the bank manager told me, do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much money that man has in his account? Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. But he was telling me what this man owns and the businesses he's doing. Yes. Because they're businesses that are well known, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't think somebody like that is the one behind them. Yeah, and everyone, thought, wow. everyone comes to his service. Yes. Yeah. But simplicity is all that we, we, we need to have mm -hmm. as we look at um, how to generate and how to build our wealth. Okay. And there, there are three perspectives okay. I see about generating wealth. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to look at our expenditure track. Okay. How do you spend your income? That mm. is really critical. Then we will evaluate in terms of what do you save? 
then from what you save, do you invest it? Where do you invest it? Mm -hmm. What are the avenues for you to invest? Yeah. And then it starts generating money for you. Then after that, we will look at how do you grow that little investment. Yes. Because, you know, sometimes people think we, as, we, we speak to the very rich. No, no. no. We want, to, we want to, to build up a desire for younger people mm. and l people who think they're in the lower cadre and they can generate their own wealth in very simple terms. Yeah. Yeah, very simple ways. Okay. Yes. Okay. If you have any questions for us, my friend, today, please make sure you send them in early. Usianza kuntumia maswali when we are about five minutes before we end the show, and you're asking me all these questions. Send them in now. So let's 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 begin. Let's begin. Mm -hmm. You know, mimi ni mkulima wa kawaida. I'm just a normal person. Mm -hmm. uh, you say number one, I need to track my expenses. Yes. Why is that important? It is very important because um, we all have. Um, you know, majority of us, let me say like 90% of us have a fixed income. Mm -hmm. So we know what we get. Probably you're employed or um, you have a, a business yeah. that you know exactly what, roughly what you get in a single month. Mm -hmm. So if you don't track, track your expenses, there is always the desire that our expenses will run wild. We always spend more than than we have. Than we have. Mm. And so we end up borrowing a lot. Oh, yeah. And so we become slaves to the person, you know, you're a slave to the person who has lent you the money. And so if you don't track your expenditure, you do not know the things that you're spending on. That's, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, you're you living like you're in the desert. You yeah. know, a day starts and a day ends and yes. life moves on. Yes. Day, one, day one comes, day 30 comes. But you really cannot say, what did I spend on? Mm -hmm. And was it necessary for me to spend on that? Could it have waited? Did you plan? Mm. So we do not have a chart. We don't know what we need to, you know, what we need to spend and when we need to spend it. And that's why you find you have a lot of school fees uh, prayer requests in January. Mm -hmm. But everyone knows that schools are opened in, in January, January and in May schools will be opened and in, in, in September. Mm -hmm. And so you need to plan. So if I need school fees in January, how do I start putting that money together early God. enough? I'm believing God. No, we need I'm to, a man of faith. We need to stop, um, you know, playing around with faith mm -hmm. and, and, and making foolish of God. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, God has given you capability. Yeah. And God has given you order. And he, he's, God, is, God is a man of order. Mm -hmm. You know, he programs. He would have created the whole world in a single day. But he did it systematically. Mm. And so we have to learn from our father. So expenditure is very important. Okay. So manage your expenses so that your expenses um, are not over and above your income. Again, your expenses should not be equal to your income. Mm. Because if your expenses are equal to your income, then you have nothing that you have put aside. You're eating everything. You're eating everything, including okay. God's money. Mm -hmm. So you need to trim you know figure out what do you trim do you live in a place where you can scale down okay we'll, we'll talk a bit about that because i think that's a very critical area but i want to take you back to uh this whole issue of uh tracking your expenses writing down what where your money is going mm -hmm. being somebody who's in the financial space and you talk to a lot of people mm -hmm. you know what percentage of people would you say actually track the expenses Less than 50%. Less than 50. Yes. And I'll tell you this because if Demo today I asked you how much money roughly you have in your pocket, if you throw that question to a lot of people, yeah. they will not be knowing how much they have. Yes. And at the end of the day, if you ask somebody, you had 3000 in the morning, how did you spend that money? It is very hard for them to detail out mm. exactly coin for coin yeah. what did i do and we need to be very candid and hard on ourselves on how we spend i need to be accountable yes it is your money yeah. but be accountable to yourself it's a discipline eh? uh, yes say i ate lunch 120 nikarudishiwa 80 bob yoka 50 na hizo coins za 10 and 20 niliziweka wapi you need to be that agile you need to be to track coin for coin because coins matter mm -hmm. yes they do mm -hmm. because it is not about the big monies it is a small monies that we are going to be able to save to be able to put aside mm. and then we can be able to invest that little 
and grow our investment. And in, at the end of the day, we will look at our wealth and say, I started here and this is where I am. Mm. And then it is a journey. So th there is no rocket science about it. Okay. It is a journey. When you look at, um, um, you know, you run Google and you say, what's the average age of the billionaires or millionaires in the world? Mm -hmm. There are very few who are under 40s. Oh. Majority of them are 50 and above. So it's a journey. It's a journey. Yes. Wow. Questions on 20316, WhatsApp 0786316316. That whole aspect of not spending 100%. We'll talk about it shortly because most of us are in a space where we feel what I have is not even enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I feel like I don't have 100% and you're telling me not to spend all of it. How do I manage through all that? We'll speak about that shortly. Thank you so much for tuning in. Financial Clinic, it's all about building wealth. Is it possible for everybody to build wealth? Apparently, yes, it is. But there are quite a number of things you need to be aware of. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. We've talked about the whole issue of tracking your spending. In guest with me today is Margaret Wenjiro. She is a financial consultant. If you need somebody to help you put your finances together, she is the person to talk to. So, you said earlier that uh, don't spend everything yes yeah you're tracking but make sure that you don't maximize on the 100 percent yes what about those people who say me nicotini already yeah even the house i'm living in i live somewhere in a kaslam i already walk to work but even what i'm getting is not enough how do you expect me not to spend a hundred percent um Tough question, especially in today's economic times. Yes. Yes, times are very hard. Mm -hmm. But in every space that an individual is in, it is possible for you not to spend everything. It is possible. It is very possible. Okay. You just need to adjust kam kaza kamba, mm -hmm. because you know where you want to go. You say you can uh -huh. spend, you, you know, you can spend a hundred of what you have, but then you're in a vicious cycle. So yeah. day in, day out, and that's your lifestyle. And at the end of the day, you will end, end up at the grave. Yes, you have spent all your money mm -hmm. and you have lived all your life. That is okay. But at the end of the day, we are saying, um, even the Bible says that um, a wise man leaves an inheritance, an inheritance for, his, for, his children. Children, yes, for his grandchildren. And so the inheritance could be spiritual and the inheritance could be both spiritual and physical. Yeah. So that is important. Mm. So I believe in every... Um, in, in, in every st step of the way. Mm -hmm. Because we all began somewhere, Jimo. I mean, you began by walking to work mm -hmm. before you probably could live in another place. Mm -hmm. And so we scale up. As we scale up, how are we doing it? And so wherever, at whatever stage you are in, you can decide how to manage it. Okay. Yes. One meal a day. You won't die because you know what you want, you know to, what achieve. want to achieve. Yes. So if, if really it means you sacrificing lunch yeah. or sacrificing dinner, na ulale utamka subuhi ulikuwa tu mzima and then you can take some piece of ugali and strong tea. And and those are the people who have actually said this is where we began from. We have people mm. like that. Yes. I've realized people who do that are people who have a vision because I've learned in life that when you have a vision it will demand discipline exactly but when there's no vision people cast off restraint there's no discipline there's no discipline yeah. but if yeah. you know you know what my salary is not enough mm -hmm. and you know I need about two three thousand to start that kibanda then you will and you know what huh? you don't even need to fast finya money mm. but even time even time. Even time. Ah, yes. Because you could you could be working yes. in a place where you probably close at four thirty. Mm -hmm. So you have more time in your hands mm -hmm. and you probably live closer. Yeah. What can you do? If you actually can go to the market very early in the morning, get some skumawiki, keep them ready. Gioni ukuje ufungue mahali ya kukatakata skumawiki. You will sell skumawiki. Now you did not have ten shillings, that evening you make ten shillings. Yeah. So in a whole month you'll have three hundred shillings. Mm -hmm. That is money that you can put aside. So we want to begin from very simple ways. Mm -hmm. You've seen people who actually um they make mandazis at four AM and um, they sell them, and by 8 a.m., wamemaliza na wako kwa ofisi. Wako job. 
and and that's that's how most of us are doing it because when you have income in an office it will not sustain you mm -hmm. you'd always want to strangle your boss to add you another zero yeah but that is not possible so what do you do analyze the time you have mm -hmm. if you don't have the time analyze your finances mm -hmm. you will never miss those two wow to work with okay so i've tracked my finances yes what's the next step so track your finances when you track your finances we are saying that you should always be left with a residual amount mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. some balance yeah. that you have said i have not been able to spend and we are starting with you earn a thousand shillings try and spend 700 shillings everything should fit within that 700 shillings so make 300 shillings as a surplus now that 300 shillings we have various ways of growing there are you know there are methods table banking has come to the very bottom of the pyramid mm -hmm. where you can do table banking and it ups your money and you're able to start something as you're repaying slowly for the sake of the person who may not know what you're talking about when you talk about table banking just explain it to us briefly table banking is very close to chama and okay. merry-go-round yeah but table banking is where you're just not giving money around you you jemo we agree with we are five of us mm -hmm. and and we say we are going to form a, a group and mm -hmm. each one of us is going to register with 300 shillings yeah. so there's 1500 shillings and that money is not distributed among ourselves no. that money is borrowed among ourselves uh -huh. and we say every person will borrow and they will give a certain interest at the end of the month yeah and then we give you a grace period for you to pay so if I am going to have 1500 and I borrow, I can start a, ki, a kibanda to sell skuma wiki. Mm -hmm. I can st start a kibanda to just sell jugu karanga. Mm -hmm. By the way, peanuts have a lot of money mm -hmm. and people should stop despising the people who sell peanuts. peanuts yes. And, and so they, you can start small and then grow. So what we're saying is generate that extra money and save it. After you save it, invest it. Now, that investment is like, I am going to sell peanuts. I buy peanuts for 500 shillings. I can sell those peanuts for 800 shillings. What I have, have I done? I've generated an extra 300 shillings. Compound it. Usikule. Mm -hmm. Put it back. Yeah. So you, now you're buying jugus for 800. Now you sell them and you build up like that. And soon you're going to have stock or your, your investment now in peanuts is mm -hmm. going to be like 2,000, 3,000. In a year, if you consistently do that, and that's the other challenge, there has to be consistency. Mm -hmm. You don't break the pattern. You break the pattern, you go back to zero. Utakula mbegu. Utakula mbegu wa ndani ya mwili. So that is a challenge that we have. So you have to, you have to keep your seed growing. Yeah. Manua, put ongeza mbolea, ongeza maji and all that. Now if you are selling to 10 customers, you start thinking about selling to more people. Mm -hmm. Start thinking about how you can distribute to family media. Njugu zineleto hapa chini and everybody gets f five packets or three packets and especially now the children are home. Mm -hmm. Jemu, you can take something home if somebody brings njugu karanga and mm -hmm. your children will, you know, simple mechanisms. Now we invest. Invest in areas where that wealth is generated. Now, for those people who probably are having more, you can look at avenues of putting your money. You, could, you, you, you can put your money in shares. You mm -hmm. can put your money in manufacturing. There are many avenues that you can do. If Wewe ni ule mkulima, you started talking about, yeah. and you have a cow. Now, that cow has milk. Yes. You are selling milk as raw milk. Start thinking about vile unaeza fungua kakibanda hapo. Mm -hmm. And now you have milk in a thermos. That is value addition, ume boil. Ah. Now you're selling it as hot milk. Then start thinking about how you can have bread next to it and tea next to it. Mm -hmm. And now you can do tea mm -hmm. as opposed to just selling milk. Mm -hmm. From there, start thinking about, I have yes. milk that doesn't go. Can I generate that milk? into yogurt mm. and now i'm able to actually preserve it because now milk is not going into waste to say i have no fridge i have nothing yeah. turn it into yogurt and sell it as yogurt in small measure mm -hmm. and within our environment there are people who are your customers every person every market yeah so at the village level think about how many homes you can actually do that is there a mjengo coming around a construction that is around there those men will and women will need women are in construction nowadays mm. eh? they will need to eat they will need to drink mm. and and they they are paid at the end of the week yes and that way you're able to grow your wealth and you know one of the things i've realized uh when you talk about these construction workers i've, yeah, I've realized there are some mamas who are very strategic yeah especially in this area of ours you know they see something that's about to begin mm -hmm. and uh, they strike a deal yes and they know 
it will take these guys another one year to finish this building. Yes. So I know for the next one year I'm covered. Yes. You know, they just strike a deal with the contractor. I'll be bringing food to your people, what, 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 what. Mm -hmm. And they're there for a year. But even having said that, I think sometimes we despise these small opportunities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we allow our pride to take over. Oh, yes. Ati mimi mandazi. Nimeziaka kwa bag. Mimi. Zindeziki inuka kwa matato. We despise those opportunities. What would you say to that? Um, I think the Bible is very clear. Mm -hmm. Let us not despise humble beginnings. Yes. The, and, and I think if we even look at our, um, you know, our fathers in faith, they all began from very humble. Yeah. perspective yeah very humble perspectives so let's not despise humble beginnings it is where you actually are seeing the growth mm -hmm. you can track where you're coming from and where you where you are at and mm -hmm. where you want to go and um by by not doing what we want to do is because we are so afraid about what people will say yeah and i call it peer pressure in grown-ups and we need to actually overcome that mm -hmm. and we also need to uh, to agree that jimo when poverty strikes at your door yeah <laughs> those people you are afraid will talk when you're carrying mandazi they will still talk they will still talk so let them talk anyhow yeah do what you need to do when you need to do it that is very important and a lot of these humble beginnings have a lot of integrity in them you'll never have the taxman follow you because you are doing things in a very open space i'm mm. selling mandazis mm. you know you just buy unga do it in your house and you sell yes. clean business you know, so you are not afraid about how people make money and big money it's because when you're thinking about, you know, not taking the staircase, yeah. then you will start thinking about business, you know, under the desk, yeah. and and that is illegal business, mm -hmm. and and it's not godly. So let's let's do business in the right way. We start small and then we scale it up. Then we monitor it. Yes, very important that you monitor your investment. Uh -huh. So we may answer maziwa. Umeanza, you have put it in a thermos, you have started doing tea, you have started doing yogurt. Mm. Are you tracking? Then are you also growing with your business? Because uwezi ka tu fuwa vile ulianza kakibanda, now you need to scale up, you know, yes. polish it a little bit, get it into the next level. Always have the desire to get into the next level. So ulianza kwa kibanda, and now you want to get into the, like the hotel space, mm -hmm. then probably you want to even do outside catering. Yes. So you have to have a vision of where you want your business to go. It's interesting you say that. When I was living in Banana, mm -hmm. uh, there's this small supermarket we loved going to. I forgot the name. But we loved going into this supermarket because the owner was very friendly. Mm -hmm. He always struck a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. He was a very jolly man. Mm -hmm. And he opened till late. Yes. He would close at midnight. Mm -hmm. He would open in the afternoon, mm -hmm. but close at midnight. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day I asked him, how did you begin this supermarket? Mm -hmm. And he told me, because he realized I'm a pastor because he used to see me on TV. Yes. He said, Pastor, I mm -hmm. didn't tell me. He says, Pastor, you know what I, how I started this supermarket? I got some money. Mm -hmm. I went to a wholesale shop. Mm -hmm. I bought products and mm -hmm. I started selling them by the roadside. Yes. I said, you can be serious. He said, mm -hmm. yes. I started mm -hmm. selling them by the roadside. Mm -hmm. It grew into a kibanda. Mm -hmm. I grew it into a shop. Mm -hmm. And now I've grown it into a this Kamini market. Yes. And my vision is to grow it now into a large supermarket. Yeah. I thought, and maybe a what? chain. And maybe a chain of yes. supermarkets. Yes. Yeah. And you see, that's what I'm saying. It's a journey. Yes. Maybe by the time he realizes that, he will be 60, 50, yes. 70. But you see, when a young man mm. looks at that man. I want it now. I want it now. And he, he's even thinking, this guy has a mini market. Mbona hauzangi kama naivas, hauzi kama, you know, those big supermarkets and all that. Yeah. But you have to begin from somewhere. somewhere. A lot of ladies who are in outside catering today, they mm -hmm. will tell you they started hooking mandazis and samosas in offices. Wow. That's where they began. But they had a vision to get somewhere. Yes, now they have a fleet of vehicles written so and so catering, catering, outside catering services. You can't probably hire them today. So we see that now, mm -hmm. and we don't see there. Like, it's like, who, who said this? Was it Pastor Favor or somebody else? Who said, We see the glory. Oh, yes. And we don't know the story. We don't know the story, the pain. So, yes. So even yes. me, I want by next month. And the even tears. Even I have James Okumu catering vehicles running around. And you want five, not one. Not, 
<laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this shortly. This mm -hmm. is from uh, Teresa. Teresa says, good morning. I'm a teacher employed under BOM mm -hmm. uh, still. Mm -hmm. I'm being paid 13K. How mm -hmm. can I invest and save and make it more before I'm employed permanently? Okay. 13k we'll talk about that shortly mm -hmm. if you have any questions please throw them our way via sms on 20316 whatsapp 0786316316 and not just questions maybe your story is similar to what some of the examples we are using we would love to hear it maybe you began by hawking those mandazis at the office and now you have this big catering farm or maybe like our friend, you began by selling things by the roadside and now it's a supermarket. Why would we need to hear those stories? Because there's this other notion we have as Kenyans that everybody who has money must have stolen from somewhere. Yeah. Mm -mm. There are people who do it right, mm -hmm. pole pole. Mm -hmm. They are patient and they grow it. We need more stories. 20316 SMS, WhatsApp 0786316316. It is the financial clinic. Comes your way every Wednesday between 8 and 9. Today we are looking at how do you create wealth? How do you grow wealth? Your questions are welcome on 20316 for SMS. WhatsApp 0786316316. In studio with me today, I have Margaret Wanjiro, who is a financial consultant, and she's helping us to get more insight into how we can begin from where we are i love what she said do not despise the days of small beginnings come on mandazi use a mandazi you know start from somewhere have a vision and then start from somewhere and then kidogo kidogo begin to grow it what would you tell our teacher you know earning 13k and asking how can i invest and save and make it to grow and become more before i'm employed permanently um, now, for the teacher, I'm, I'm imagining that you probably live very close to the school because if you're employed as a BOM teacher, mm -hmm. I would advise that you live closer to school. Yeah. So you probably walk to school. Um, the housing, if you're not in um, very urban areas, the housing will be also very affordable. Yeah. Um, cut that amount of money and probably put it somewhere. Join a circle, mm -hmm. you know. Um, get into table banking with some ladies of your of your kind yeah and you you can begin by something as a BOM teacher I believe that um, there, there, there are schools where there is you know the staff room doesn't have facilities you probably can bring them and to mm -hmm. the teachers mm -hmm. and they can buy for break you you know you can you can do something so there's, there's a lot that you can do with uh, 13,000 shillings yeah. that's a lot of money Wow this one is from Shadrach Omusinde. Shadrach, how are you doing? Thank you for always listening in. You say, wow, Pastor James, thanks for today. This is really an eye-opener to me. It has come at the right time when I have truly been struggling with my finances. I've been trying to save, but I find that I use 100%. Not that I have been unfaithful with, with the money, but I just didn't know that it has to do with my vision and discipline and humble beginnings. I'm going to act on this with my wife. Thank you for that. Good to know that we have been helpful to you. Jackson, Anasema Anabarikiwa Sana, watching us all the way in Bungoma. And I also have George O'War. You see, I'm loving the show on wealth. I'm also a BOM teacher. And one thing, the word impossible has never been in my dictionary. I earn 16K and a BOM, but through discipline, next year, September, I will be pursuing my master's in agronomy after saving from the BOM money. Yes. Once you have a vision and yeah. discipline things will flow yes wow george kudos thank you for sharing that and uh, we ask that george becomes an ambassador yes to most of those bom teachers mm -hmm. they can actually get into their masters and they can do much much more yeah, in yes. fact there are people who even start investing and they in future buy land or you know they are able to 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 buy vehicles for business mm -hmm. or invest and pull together their resources yes again Gemma, i think i also want to mention this that sometimes there is what you can not do on your own uh -huh. And sometimes working with like-minded people mm -hmm. can help you scale up your vision. So you 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 know you can save um, two thousand, but when you're five of you, you're able to save ten thousand in a month. Yeah. So even if you go to a place and borrow a, fi a, a financial institution, mm. you have the muscle to mm -hmm. repay. And so you can begin by buying one Uber. That is biashara. Yeah. And so you have income that is coming extra income mm. just from your teacher but there's an uber somewhere that is running it is solely not yours but a group of you but then you have income that is going to come from that and and therefore it gives you um you know a thrust 
and to be able to do much, much more investment. So sometimes pulling resources together mm -hmm. is really, really important. You know, you said Uber, and I know I shared this with you when we were listening to the music, but probably somebody needs to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, a friend of mine told me a story of this Uber individual they were having a conversation with, and he basically directed how he started talking about how he finished high school and he just started doing border border business with his bicycle. I don't know whether it was his or his father's bicycle back in Gishagi. Mm -hmm. And he put aside some money, put aside some money. Somebody connected him. He was able to buy a motorcycle secondhand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he started doing Biashara now with the motorcycle, border border business. Very focused. Yes. And he saved and he saved and he saved diligently until he got to 300K. Wow. And he got an offer to buy a car at 450 and he gave the 300 and they agreed he was given the car and a time period to pay the balance of 150 and there he was now having his own car mm -hmm. doing his own uber business yes and i thought look at that growth he didn't steal from anybody he didn't have yes. a rich uncle somewhere exactly. but he had a plan and a vision from a bicycle yes yes so it's 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 how you visualize mm -hmm. and 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 you have to have resilience to you know to get to where you want to be yes and Jimo, let me tell you um these uber guys are multi-millionaires some of those circles yes it's just that they don't have financial advisory they have a lot of money in bank accounts mm. that they need to actually trust themselves they can actually be the real matatu owners of today yes they just need to begin mm. yeah i'm asking <laughs> if you save money and sudden emergencies that demand all your savings and you can't help from other areas what do you do um i want i would want him to define what is an emergency yes because um yes. sometimes what we call emergencies are not emergencies they are things that can wait yes there are people that can wait um their desires and and you know it's not a basic need that must be done unless mm. it is really a medical issue then it's not an emergency. Jemo at Akwena maternity is your emergency. God gives you <laughs> nine, nine good months to, to plan for it. So it's not an emergency. But I look at it this way, yeah? If I have money for rent, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's say my rent is 25,000, 30,000. I have it, mm -hmm. cash. Mm -hmm. An emergency comes. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Will I give that money to somebody because they have an emergency? No. Landlord work on an emergency, you will have to weigh them. Exactly. Who do you want to face? Exactly. Exactly. So sometimes we have savings, mm -hmm. but it's just savings. Yes. It's not for any particular thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm saving to be able to buy my car to do taxi business, mm -hmm. then I have a goal. Exactly. If an emergency comes, my thinking will be, you know, Ipesa ikitoka apa. We save ten After that, lady, Tulia, let me buy the car from mm -hmm. the proceeds of the car. Now I can be able to help you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. When you derail your goal, then you get off plan, and mm -hmm. that is important. And a lot of people, um, you know, there they, is the issue of the constituents, the the, the the confidence, and all that. Yeah. A lot of people are just there to come and derail you, mm. and you need to understand that. And that's why you have to be very focused. You do not have to be a people pleaser. It is always good to say no yeah. and tell some people wait, and some people you tell them yes. Yeah. All those are answers. Yeah. You see, when I tell you I will help you after three months because I have already made some commitment. It is very critical mm. so that people don't, you know, people know that you work within schedule. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Imagine I can see we're almost running out of time. Soon enough, I'll start hearing voices in my head. There's something I, I want us not to fail to talk about. Mm -hmm. I want us to fast track. Yes. Yeah. Ingine Akatikati will still do another show as a continuation mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. for this probably in January. Yes. But once I get to that place mm -hmm. where I have wealth, financial yes. wealth, mm -hmm. What next? <laughs> uh, very important. Yeah. Um, it's a place that we all desire to be. Yes. And we said it's a journey. Now, the other thing about um, when you arrive, let's say you are there, mm. so you're not, your, your, your wealth is generating wealth for you. Yes. And so you can, you can relax and you can do all those things. Now, it is time for us to know why did God give you that enablement? Mm -hmm. It is critical. And the Bible clearly says that the true gospel is taking care of the orphans and the widows. Mm -hmm. So it's important that that wealth goes into certain areas yeah. so that you actually are able 
to do that. Now, I'll give an example of mm -hmm. Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not very sure. The last time I checked, he had not um, put his faith. He doesn't uh, put his faith out there that mm -hmm. I'm a Christian or not. So we are not very sure about his position. Mm -hmm. But he is a man who knows what it is to give back. Yeah. And when you give back, it comes back to you. That's a principle. Mm -hmm. Comes back to you, press down. Second together and running over. Exactly. <laughs> and so that is what people should learn to do. Yeah. Because we, if we are able to generate wealth, then we can also begin opportunities where we also can create employment. Mm -hmm. And in this country, that is a need that is there. So yes. we need to stop throwing the word entrepreneurship everywhere. Not mm. every person is an entrepreneur. Yeah. Some will be employed by the entrepreneurs yeah. who we actually do. Yeah. And so for me, that is very important. The challenge that I, I would want to throw out there is how do you begin? Mm. Where do you begin? Mm. And so it, it, it all starts with you sitting down, visualizing, yeah. and coming up with a manifesto. And we ca you can call it a money made manifesto for 2020. Yes. I don't want us to start thinking about resolutions because no. we don't live with resolutions. <laughs> yes. But we need to come up with a charter. Where do I want to go? Who do I want to be in 2020? Mm -hmm. How do I want to spend my money? And you start tracking all that together. Very true. Yeah. Wow. Parting shot, especially to our young people, yeah, mm -hmm. who want to be millionaires instantly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they look at some of these things and they're thinking, I mean, I can't do that. What would you tell them? I think a, the, a lot of the young people have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And time is money. They can decide what they want to do. A lot of young people also have a mentality that there are things they can do and things they cannot do. And I really want to speak to our young people. There are those who can wash cars. Mm -hmm. It is 300, 200 shillings to wash okay. a car. How many can you do in a day and put in a savings? Take ki the kind of business. There are young people who can actually take up, like now it's going to be a very busy week for mothers. Yeah. How many people can say, give me your shopping list. I will go to the shop to the supermarket or to the market and pick up all the groceries that you require. Don't even give me the money. There are pay bills mm. almost everywhere. Hata kwa mama mboga kuna pay bill, kuna lipa na mpesa. And you pay for your groceries and then you pay him the commission for doing that business yeah. for you. Yeah. There are great opportunities this Christmas, mm. this season to make some money and so in January you can begin with the 10,000 shillings that you actually can make in these two weeks. Wow. Very important. Awesome. Uncle is coming home, clean his car. Yeah. Don't think at you, Uncle na kujanga apa tumoshe gari. Talk yeah. to him nicely. Yes. Exactly. So young people, they are great opportunities that you can actually start small. Mm -hmm. There are people who can make chapatis this season and they make good chapatis. Yes. And all you do is, there are ladies who can actually decide, I will wash dishes mm. in different homes. Mm. Yes. Because that is the other thing that ladies are saying, I want to make my nails for Christmas. Yes. Nani atawasha sufuria. There are ladies who can actually do that. And yes. you make money from home to home, three homes in a day. Na unajua umekula uko vizuri. Exactly. So, and you make your money. Tuma salamu. Ningependa uh, kusalimia warembo wangu watatu, Christine, Kerry, Kate, and Jamal, and um, and every person who is um, a follower of Mayra Solutions. Yes. We wish you Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. Awesome. Asante sana. Asante. It's possible. You don't need to be corrupt. You don't need a rich uncle somewhere. What do you have in your hand? begin there. Even the one who was given to, multiplied it to become four. He didn't get to ten, but he was not where he started. Don't be like the one who was given one. You hide what you have and you're thinking, I, what good can this do? Don't despise that one talent God has given you. Put it to use. Grow it. Within the next five years, you'll be looking back and saying, hey, my friend, I'm glad I began. Don't wait until it's too late. We are running out of time. In fact, we've run out of time. <laughs>